Hey, so yes, this video is gonna be about warp stabilizer, but I will try to give some of my experience and advice using it. <laughs> I have some shaky handheld footage from our trip to Warshaw. Warp Stabilizer is a great tool to stabilize the shaky handheld footage. To find this effect, go to Effects and search for Warp Stabilizer. Drag the effect on your video and as you can see it starts automatically to analyze your footage and of course stabilize it. As you can see, by default, Warp Stabilizer makes quite a good job for stabilizing footage. In most cases, it is enough, but sometimes it can make footage look jellyish and not that smooth. And always keep in mind that this effect crops and zooms a little bit of your footage. So let's see what can we do more. In the result section by default it comes smooth motion. This selection is good for moving footage, but if your footage is steady, try to use no motion option. It makes your footage look like shot on a tripod. Now, it is important to choose the right stabilizing method. You can find there four options. By default, it is subspace warp. This option allows Premiere to perspective warp and warp individual parts of your clip, also using position, rotation, and scale. Basically, this option loses some parameters by going down. It kind of goes from 4D to 3D ish to 2D and to 1D stabilization. Once you have chosen the right method for your footage, try to play with the smoothness level. The less smoothness you choose, the less warpy and jello-ish the footage will be. But in the same time, the less you choose, the less stabilized footage will be. Also, you can go to advanced settings and adjust crop less, smooth more adjustment. By reducing it, the effect will zoom out, but the shakiness will be bigger. By increasing, it will zoom in your video clip, crops more of your video, but shakiness will be less. So that would be it about Warp Stabilizer. Don't forget to try different options and play with the smoothness just to find what will work the best for your footage. It is hard to give some specific parameters for this effect because every footage is different, so you have to find a way for your own footage. So guys, if you like this tutorial, leave a like. And as always, thanks for watching.